Good day everyone. Welcome again to our personal development session. For today's video, Module 22, conduct a mini-survey on Filipino relationships, family, school, and community. The module focuses on social relationship with the family, school, and community in middle and late adolescence. We cannot deny that establishing relationship is vital to everyone. Looking for company during the Middle Ages sometimes gravitate the relationships and attachments of an individual to their peers. Filipinos, for instance, are very much close to family, relatives, and even acquaintances. After going through this module, you are expected to conduct a mini-survey on Filipino relationships, family, school, and community. Before we start our discussion, let us have pre-test first. What is the primary source of personal relationship in teenage life? Family, school, community, peers. 2. What is critical in the development of teenagers' life as they transcend, to young adulthood, a. Friendship and attachment, b. High school and college years, c. Family and school activity, d. School and community involvement. 3. Which relationship refers to connection that exists between people who have recurring interaction that are perceived by the participants to have personal meeting? A. Social relationship B. Personal relationship C. Emotional relationship D. Emerital relationship 4. What relationship is involved when you encounter people oftentimes? A. Family B. Friends C. Colleague D. Acquaintances 5. What partnership is present when a scholastic achievement of the teenager is involved? A. Home a school partnership. B. School community partnership. C. Community home partnership. D. Community parents partnership. 6. Which of the following defines community partnership? A. It is the way in which two people regard and behave towards each other. B. It is the relationship between family members and neighbors. C. It is the relationship through kinship, D. It describes a company's interaction in the society in which someone resides. 7. What is true about a mini-survey? A. It consists of 15 to 50 questions, B. It is given to a large group of respondents, C. It invites freely expanded comment, D. It usually used more close than open-ended questions. 8. Eric has to conduct a mini-survey about family relationship. Who would be his possible respondents? A. Eric's neighbors. B. Eric's friends. C. Eric's schoolmates. D. Eric's siblings and kinship. 9. Which of the following questions is correct and appropriate when writing questionnaire? A. Whose student is present in the meeting? B. Would you like to study near Manila Thesi? If you could improve your speech, would you do it? D. Should the school strictly implement the policies? 10. How many words must be used in making questions in a mini-survey? A. More than 16 words. B. Less than 16 words. C. Exactly 16 words. D. 20 words and above. 11. What kind of sentence is acceptable in constructing questions in mini-survey? A. Simple sentence. B. Compound sentence. C. Complex sentence. D. Vague sentence. 12. Which step is not included in conducting a mini-survey? A. Clarify your objectives. B. Find out what else has been done. C. Choose the respondents. D. Develop the questions while conducting the survey. 13. According to the British and Thorndike 1973, guidelines for writing questions must be a. Long and accurate, b. Short and simple, c. Constructed with passive than active words, d. Constructed with pronoun instead of noun. 14. Grace is preparing a mini-survey about Filipino relationship. What is the first thing that she must do? a. Prepare a question, b. Go out and look for respondents. C. Interview the respondents. D. Clarify the objectives in conducting survey. 15. Which is the correct order in preparing a mini-survey? A. 
find out what else has been done, b. Clarify the objectives, c. Choose your respondents, d. Develop the questions, a. a b c d, b. b a c d, c. c a b d, d. d c b a. The social relationship needs interaction among individuals, which involves influence. Individuals' influences have an effect on your behavior, which may help or hinder you from fulfilling your social roles. Moreover, it is inevitable that someone may agree or disagree with you because there is no perfect world that everything goes well with you, not everybody says yes and makes a nod with your thoughts, opinions, and values which means disagreements can be pretty common, especially in the society where you live in. The ability to perceive how people see you is what enables you to connect to others authentically and to reap the deep satisfaction that comes with those ties. Establishing connections and relations is needed in the place where you are and the organization where you belong. In this lesson, you will further deepen how the Filipino relationships are common to every people, adolescents, by conducting a mini-survey. Let's try this activity. Activity 1. Complete the puzzle below by filling a word that fits each clue. Write your answers on a separate piece of paper. Here's another activity, camera action. 1. Paste your photo on the picture frame below. Make an online survey on how other people perceive you or see you. Your respondents are your family, schoolmates, churchmates, and your friends in your Facebook. Ask them to describe you in terms of how you relate with them using positive description. 2. Write all the descriptions made by your respondents on the hand below. Then write on the shapes the first five common adjectives that people frequently use to describe you. Process questions 1. How did you find the activity? 2. How did you perceive yourself from the point of view of your family, school, and community? 3. Write your own description of how you relate with others on the first column. On the second, third, and fourth column, write the perception of your family, schoolmates, or community respectively about how you deal with them. Middle adolescents find themselves in the company of their peers usually from the school or neighborhood. As they gravitate more toward these groups, the attachment to the family as their primary source of personal source or personal development shifts to these peers or group. Being able to create friendship and new attachment is critical in the development of adolescents as they transcend to young adulthood. From high school to college, Adolescents nurture faster socially where new lessons are learned especially on how their social interactions are formed. They affirm themselves with self-identity and their self-esteem develop their capacity to nurture who they are. In such way, learning to associate and develop relationships is nurtured in this stage. Social relationship is very common to all individuals. Social relationships refer to the connections that exist between people who have recurring interactions that are perceived by the participants to have personal meaning. This definition includes relationships between family members, friends, neighbors, fellow, workers, and other associates. Relationship is the way in which two or more people or groups regard and behave toward each other. There are many different types of relationships. In this topic, we will focus on three types of relationships, family relationships, friendships, acquaintanceships, and community relationships. Number one, family relationships or relatives are people we are connected to through some form of kinships, such as parents, brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles or step parents. The family includes siblings and parents you may see every day growing up and other relatives such as cousins, aunts, uncles, and grandparents you may not see frequently, too. Friends are people we are not related to but choose to interact with. A friend is a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. Friends are people we trust, respect, care about, and feel that we can confide in and want to spend time with. Friends are close to you whom you can confide in. Th three. Acquaintances are people you may encounter oftentimes, but are not friends or relatives. For instance, they may be a neighbor who lives in your road, a work colleague or someone you have seen a few times at a social event but do not yet know well. 
Acquaintances are persons whom you know slightly, but who is not a close friend. Lastly, community relations simply describe a company's interactions with the community in which it resides. Cambridge Dictionary defines it as the relationship that a company or organization has with the people who live in the area in which it operates. Building community relationships can be the most important communication activity undertaken by an organization for the good of the community. Filipinos perspective in building family relationship is focused on establishing close ties. Filipinos are very hospitable and friendly people. They always smile no matter how they feel. Meeting someone for the first time, Filipinos, do not hesitate to give a smile before starting a conversation. Filipinos have close, family ties and always wanted to talk about their extended family. Filipinos are very family-oriented. Homeschool partnership occurs through the processes of cooperation, coordination, and collaboration to enhance learning opportunities, educational, progress, and school success for students in the academic, social, emotional, and behavioral domains. According to Johnson 2015, homeschool partnerships stated that children's learning is increasingly moving toward a broader vision of the 21st century learning. As children's educations increasingly occur across a range of settings, parents are uniquely positioned to help ensure that these settings best support their children's specific learning needs. Parental involvement is observed in the school setting in the Philippines. The amount of participation a parent has when it comes to the schooling of his or her children fosters healthy outcome thus, parental involvement is needed in children's education, according to H. Castillon 1A Ubono 10, the dynamics of homeschool, partnership and young learners' performance, from the lens of kindergarten. Teachers' conferences, classroom projects, contributions, Partnership is strengthened with the three R's, rapport, reaching out, recognition to parents, involved parents beget confident, sociable, and active kids, less involved, parents tend to have kids who are timid, withdrawn and perform less. Parenting is important in the Philippine educational setting because family is viewed as a center to one's social world. Many of today's leaders in education, business and community development are coming to realize that schools alone cannot prepare our youth for a productive adulthood. It is evident that schools and communities should work closely with each other to meet their mutual goals. Schools can provide more support for students, families, and staff when they are an integral part of the community. Appropriate and effective collaboration and teaming are seen as key factors to community development, learning, and family self-sufficiency, Partnerships should be considered as connections between schools and community resources. The partnership may involve the following, 1. Utilization of school or neighborhood facilities and equipment or giving out other resources, 2. Collaborative fundraising and grant applications giving assistance, 3. Mentoring and training from professionals and others with special expertise, 4. Information sharing and dissemination, 5 networking recognition and public relations, 6. Shared responsibility for planning, 7. Implementation and evaluation of programs and services, 8. Expanding. Opportunities for internships, jobs, recreation, and building a sense of community. School community partnerships can intertwine many resources and strategies to enhance communities that support all youth and their families. They could make schools better, strengthen neighborhoods, and lead to a noticeable depletion in young people's problems. Building such partnerships requires visioning, strategic planning, creative leadership, and new adoptable roles for professionals who work in schools and communities. Filipino relationships are observed in the family, school, community, and other agencies, Find out how social relationship occurs in the lives of teenagers by conducting mini-survey. In conducting a mini-survey, you have to know how it is done. Mini-surveys are carefully focused on a specific topic. It contains only 15 to 30 questions. It is given to a small sample of 25 to 70 people. It usually uses more closed than open-ended questions, that is, they use questions that 
force the respondent to choose from a small set of alternative answers, rather than inviting a freely expanded comment. Some uses of the mini-survey are, 1. To get a picture that will help you to design the next stages of your research, 2. To assess the feasibility of a project, 3. To get reactions from beneficiaries, 4. To evaluate projects. A mini-survey can be completed in three to seven weeks compared to large surveys that can take a year before the whole process to be completed and the results analyzed. 1. Technically, mini-surveys for development research are usually structured interviews rather than questionnaires because questionnaires exclude people who cannot read. Interviews have the added advantage of allowing you to help people through a process that may be culturally alien, confusing, or intimidating. Two. The respondents are few, three. A mini-survey may not give you great precision, it may be good enough to give you a general picture of the situation, trends, and patterns. Steps in conducting a mini-survey Step 1. Clarify your objectives. Ask yourself, A. What do I want to find out? Y. E. B. Is this technique the way to get this kind of information? C. When I get the answers to these questions, will they meet my needs? Step 2. Find out what else has been done. There are ready-made survey questions which were utilized by some researchers and may be good enough for your purposes. This may provide you with some useful ideas and information and will allow you to use for your study. This may also let you go a step a little further for it gives a little ease to do. However, do not automatically use someone else's questions unless you are convinced they will work for you. Step 3. Choose the respondents. First, you must decide whether you are going to ask your questions of the entire group or second you use sampling. Step 4. Develop the questions. Prepare your questions to be asked from your respondents. Learn to write good questions by thinking things through and by knowing about the people who will answer them. Guide in writing questions. The do's and the don'ts. The following guidelines for writing questions were adapted from the work of cross-cultural research experts Brislin, Lawner, and Thorndike, 1973, who created them to help in translating questions from one language to another. But they are useful even when you do not have to translate. 1. Use short, simple sentences of less than 16 words. However, sensitive questions may require a softener. 2. Use the active rather than the passive voice. Should the teachers discipline the students, rather than should discipline be carried out by the teachers? 3. Repeat nouns instead of using pronouns. When the teacher saw memorandum, he was terrified. Who was terrified? 4. Avoid metaphors and colloquialisms, Earl and Elgem agreed, but Eloise thought that was a horse of a different color. 5. Avoid the subjective mode such as verbs with could and would, if the school could improve its security system, would people send more girls avoid vague words such as nearer, often, and frequent? Would you like to live nearer to Baguio? 6. Avoid possessive forms where possible, Mila's sister took her request to her teacher, whose request, whose teacher, 7. Use specific rather than general terms, the chief, the teacher, rather than the authorities, the soccer club, the debating team, rather than extracurricular activities. 8. Avoid words with two different verbs if the verbs suggest two different actions. Should villagers attend and challenge the teachers at the parent-teacher meetings? Let us have another activity which is survey on family relationship. Complete the unfinished words. Put a check mark to the family members whom the social skill is suited. Process questions. 1. What made you decide to assign the social skills of each family member? 2. How certain are you that these social roles are really intended for them? 3. What is the impact of performing these social roles in maintaining harmonious relation in the family? Activity 2. Social relationship. Make a survey about the relationship of your parents slash family to your school and to your community by making a pie graph. Put and use the quantifiers to show the amount of time your parents spend in showing social relationship to the following. What I have learned, 
give your reflection on this topic by accomplishing the My Reflection activity. Making Questionnaire 1. Make at least three questions about Filipino relationships in terms of family, school, and community using the guide in writing the questionnaire. See the guide on page 12. Let us answer the assessment. Choose the letter of the best answer. Write your chosen letter on a separate sheet of paper 1. Which institution has the responsibility for developing personal relationships in teenage life? A. Family. B. School. C. Community. D. Barangay Office. 2. Who could influence more in the development of teenagers as they transcend to young adulthood? A. Classmates in high school and college. B. Friendship and attachment. C. Family members and relatives. D. School and the teachers. 3. What is social relationship? A. Refers to society and the place where he slash she belongs. B. Refers to the emotional relationship of individual. C. Refers to the marital relationship. D. Refers to connection that exists between people who have recurring interaction that are perceived by the participants to have personal meeting. 4. What is an acquaintance? A. A person whom you are always with. B. A person one knows slightly but who is not a close friend, C, a person you meet every day, who is close to you, D, a person who knows you, but you do not know them. 5. How can home and school partnership develop the social relationship of an adolescent, A. The school broadens the mind of the students, B. The school involves the parents in its various activities, C. The school and the home create a collaborative environment to the students, D. The school suggests improvement for students' academic performance. 6. Which group of numbers help build community partnership? 1. Provide continuity of services across the day and year, easing school transitions and promoting improved attendance in after-school programs. 2. Facilitate access to a range of learning opportunities. 3. Reinforce concepts taught in school without replicating the school day. 4. Positive relationships with schools cannot foster high-quality, engaging, and challenging activities. A. 1, 2, and 3. B. 1, 3, and 4. C. 2, 3, and 4. D. 1, 3, and 4. 7. What is not true about a mini-survey? A. It consists of 15 to 50 questions. B. It is given to a large group of respondents. C. It invites freely expanded comment, D. It usually uses more close than open-ended questions. 8. Eric has to conduct a mini-survey about school relationship. Who would be his possible respondents? A. Eric teachers. B. Eric's parents. C. Eric's schoolmates. D. Eric's siblings and kinship. 9. Which of the following questions is correct and appropriate when? Writing questionnaire about home and school partnership, A. Does the partnership between school and home reduce school violence, B. Does the partnership between school and home lead to better working conditions for faculty and staff, A. C. Does the partnership between school and home increase power and understanding of education, D. Does the partnership between school and home improve grades and make the students become achievers? 10. How many words must be used in making questions in a mini-survey? A. More than 16 words. B. Exactly 16 words. C. 20 words and above. D. Less than 16 words. 11. What phrase does not tell about the benefit of conducting a mini-survey? A. Low cost. B. Convenient data gathering. C. Good statistical significance. D. Ideal for controversial issue. 12. Which step is included in conducting a mini-survey? 1. Clarify your objectives. 2. Find out what else has been done. 3. Choose the respondents. 4. 4. Develop the questions while conducting the survey. A. 1, 2, 3. B. 1, 3, 4. C. 2, 3, 4. D. 1, 2, 4. 
13, according to the British and Thorndike 1973, guidelines for writing questions must be a. Long and accurate, b. Short and simple, c. Constructed with passive than active words, d. Constructed with pronoun instead of a noun. 14. Which is the correct order in preparing a mini-survey? 1. Develop questions, 2. Choose respondents, 3. Find out what else has been done, 4. Clarify the objectives in conducting survey, a. 4321, b. 3421, c. 4321, d. 1234. 15. How can a mini-survey help researchers conduct a bigger study in the future? A. Researchers can get a picture that will help them design the next stages of their research. B. Researchers may rely to their study. C. Researchers can do their mini-study only. D. Researchers may believe and be contented with the result of the mini-survey. Next activity. 1. Conduct a mini-survey by asking your family members or neighbors to answer the questionnaire you do through in line or group chat. 2. Retrieve and gather the results of their answers. 3. Tally the result of the survey in a table form. Use the table that you have done in making questionnaire activity. 4. Interpret the result by showing the findings of your study in the narrative form. Key to correction. Congratulations, my dear students. We are now done with Module 22. Check out Senior High School Personal Development Module 23, Family Structures and Legacies which will allow you to understand how your family affects you as a developing individual. Again, this is Ma'am Neri. Please keep in touch and watch out for more videos in my homepage. Thank you and God bless everyone.